the forefathers of the human nature of Christ all through the Old Testament. As Father Costa said in his Greek sermon, all these holy people lived the energy of the Holy Cross, the mystery of the Holy Cross in the Old Testament. The purpose of the forefathers was to bring the Panagia, to bring the Virgin Mary, that's why in the Ramagalinario that I just chanted a few minutes ago, we said, Rejoice, forefathers of Christ, because out of you sprouted the most blessed branch, the Panagia, and out of her came the great blossom of Bethlehem Christ. So we commemorate the forefathers because they gave us the Panagia, who's going to bring us Christ in the flesh in another 12 days. And the church today uses the parable of the Great Supper precisely because this is what the purpose of Christ's coming is. Christ did not come to make us good people. He didn't come to teach us a few things. The prophets taught us many things in the Old Testament. The purpose of the incarnation is for us to have the body and blood of Christ. Christ came, he died on the cross to give himself to us, to give us his body and blood. And this is why when we come to divine liturgy, we don't come to pray. It's a misconception that we can watch the divine liturgy on TV from home. This is an oxymoron. A few weeks ago, we had Thanksgiving and President Trump invited his guests and some dignitaries and his friends at the White House. And I don't know what time the dinner was, but I'm sure everybody got there on time, at least a few minutes before. We don't. When the King of all invites us to his great supper, that's what the divine liturgy is. The divine liturgy is the invitation of the King of all, the invitation to the marriage of his son, Christ. And in a parable, this king invited all these people to the Great Supper. And all the people around him were supposed to be his friends. They made up excuses, just like we make up excuses today. Oh, we have to, uh, the kids have to play sports on Sunday, so we can't go to church. Or we have to work on Sunday, we can't go to church. Or, or just, uh, you know, we have our honeymoon, so we're going to be traveling for a few months, so we can't go to church. St. Gregory the Theologian says that it is not a good thought why don't we think that I'm not worthy enough to take Holy Communion. He says this thought is not from God because nothing that we will ever do, no matter how much we purify ourselves, how much we fast, how good we become, we will never be worthy. What makes us worthy is the grace of God, his willingness to forgive us and love us and purifies us. And that's what purifies us, the blood of Christ. So the purpose of the divine liturgy is to take Holy Communion. Just like Mr. Trump, the president, would be very offended if the people who got there to have the Thanksgiving meal with him, they would say, well, we came, but we're just not going to eat. What do you mean you're not going to eat? How do you go to a Thanksgiving dinner and not eat? So St. John the Chrysostom says that it is for Christians who come to church and they have no reason to abstain from Holy Communion. It is a great sin. It's an offense to God. It offends the King of all. Just like today when somebody is sick, they have a fever, they have these symptoms, they run to a doctor and they get tested to see if they have the uh, virus or not. In the same way, we go to our spiritual father. He takes our spiritual pulse and he tells us, okay, you can take Holy Communion once a week or you can take Holy Communion once a month. 
whatever we have done. If we, if we have some grave sins, then he may tell us to wait three months, six months to a year. But still, we have the blessing of the church. But we have no epidemia. If we have no kolima in Greek, there's no hindrance. Then it is not permissible for a Christian to come to the great supper inside the church and not eat. The purpose of the divine liturgy is to take Holy Communion. This morning when I came in, I gave Father Costa a number of my, I went to my mother's yesterday, because about 50 years ago when I came to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, out of my foolishness, I went out to find my school all by myself without asking directions. I got lost. I was walking around for 12 hours. I got about till 3 o'clock in the morning. I just lost hope. So I opened a car door. I got in and I slept till the morning. The whole town was looking for me, the whole parish, the police, everybody else. In the morning, a policeman opened his door and found me in there. And then the day after I made the first page of the news, Uh, so for about a month after that, I was called the lost boy. And uh, I forgot to say that it was uh, St. Spiridon's Day. And my mother was up all night praying and promising to St. Spiridon that you know, she would send all kinds of little things to St. Spiridon once she found me. So I always visit her on this day. So I asked my mother uh, the names of our great grandparents and because she's 95 and I need to find these names out. So I took those names and gave them to Father Costa this morning. And this is something that we may know or may not know, but the divine liturgy and this hell and fills paradise. This teaching was given by Yeranda Evmenios, who was at the leprosy hospital, and by also Yeranda Ephraim of Arizona. After he left Arizona and he was visiting Philotheo to strengthen the monks that he left behind, in one of his teachings, he said that divine liturgy empties hell and fills paradise. And he gave this great analogy from marine biology. He said that souls that go to Hades are not all in the same place. He uses the ocean and he says that in the ocean, the first 200 meters, we call it the euphoric zone where you have some light passing through. Then from 200 meters to 1,000 meters, we call it the dysphoric zone and where you have basically very, very little light, almost no light. And then you have the aphotic zone below 3,000 meters. In the same way, in Hades, you have the souls who died without grave sins. Souls that went to the other life without deadly sins. They are in a euphoric zone. They still have a little bit of light. And then after them are their souls that died with unconfessed deadly sins. They are in a dysphoric zone. They see barely any light. And then below them, we have the aphotic zone, where we have the heresiarchs, the Satanists, the unbelievers, the atheists, no light at all. And then below them, in the bottom, we have the demons. And Father Ephraim and Father Ephraim of Katunakia taught us, and all these new saints of our church taught us, that it is possible through our prayers, through the prosphora that we give to the church, through proscomidi, to take souls from Hades because the last judgment did not take place yet, to take souls from Hades and put them in paradise. It is possible. It happened with Father Ephraim, with Saint Paisios. It happened with Saint Ephraim of Katunakia. The elder of Saint Ephraim of Katunakia did go to Hades, and his spiritual son, Father Ephraim, Saint Ephraim of Katunakia, did 40, 40 day liturgies, like 1600 liturgies. For five years later, he saw him come out of Hades and go to paradise. So, Father Costa, very early of the earth her service, he takes the prosperous and he takes out the amnos, the portion of Christ, and then of the Panagia and of the angels. And all these things are beautifully written in this beautiful little book that Father Nicholas Elias gave us many years ago. It's in the beginning of this book. So after he does all this offertory service, then the names that we give him, he takes he takes a particle of that bread and he puts it on the paten, on the discarium. And then after we all take Holy Communion, he takes all these particles of the souls, puts them into the body and blood of Christ, and he prays for God to wash their sins. And we have many examples of yayas and papus who appear to their grandchildren 
and said, tell your mommy thank you because she took a prosphone to church and it made me feel very nice. Thank you for that gift. We have many examples in the life of the church that this happens. Holy Communion is a great supper and will continue the great supper in the other life in a way that we don't understand how, but that communion that we take here will continue in the other life blissfully forever. Amen. Lord, 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 Lord.